U.S. President Joe Biden is set to mark 100 days in office. It's a big deal in American politics because the first 100 days are the honeymoon period. You're still carrying the momentum from the campaign trail. It is the best time to get things done. Biden marked the day with an address to Congress. The usual pomp and theater were missing. Normally around 1,600 people would have packed into the hall. This time there were only 200. Biden's address shattered a centuries-old glass ceiling in America, flanking the president were Kamala Harris and Nancy Pelosi, two of the most powerful women in America, second and third in the line of succession. It was a first in the U.S. Congress, and the president noted it right at the start. Oh, Madam Speaker, Madam Vice President, no president has ever said those words from this podium. No president has ever said those words. And it's about time. Well, beyond the symbolism, what was the substance of Biden's speech? It can be best described as ambitious. He said America was on the move again, ready for takeoff. But most of Biden's proposals lack Republican support, including a new one that he unveiled during the speech. It is called the American Families Plan. It's a $2 trillion project to expand America's social safety nets. And he spent most of Wednesday talking about it, but Republicans are not game. In fact, a few Republicans did not even try to hide their lack of interest. Just look at Senator Ted Cruz. He dozed off right in the middle of Biden's speech. A couple of hours later, he posted this on social media, boring but radical. That's what he called the address. Well, Biden's speech was mostly along expected lines. He talked up his vaccination drive, he pitched higher taxes for the rich. He also sent a message to America's rivals, China and Russia. In my discussion with President Xi, I told him, we welcome the competition. We're not looking for conflict. But I made absolutely clear that we will defend America's interest across the board. America will stand up to unfair trade practices and undercut American workers and American industries like subsidies from state to state-owned operations and enterprises and the theft of American technology and intellectual property. I also told President Xi that we'll maintain a strong military presence in the Indo-Pacific just as we do with NATO and Europe, not to start a conflict, but to prevent one. With regard to Russia, I know it concerns some of you, but I made very clear to Putin that we're not going to seek ex 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 excuse me, escalation, but their actions will have consequences. They turn out to be true, and they turned out to be true. But Biden's biggest challenge is at home, systemic racism and gun violence. The latest cases from California, 26-year-old Mario Gonzalez was pinned to the ground by cops for five minutes. He eventually became unresponsive and died in a hospital later that day. What was his crime? He appeared to be disoriented or drunk. White supremacy continues to dominate American thinking. We see it when cops shoot black Americans or when Asian Americans are targeted. Some prosecutors, in fact, want the International Criminal Court to step in. They say these police killings are crimes against humanity. So what does President Biden propose to do about it? He's backing a police reform bill named after George Floyd. It has already cleared the House, but the Senate battle promises to be tough. So Biden used his address to pitch bipartisanship and unity. My fellow Americans, we have to come together to rebuild trust between law enforcement and the people they serve to root out systemic racism in our criminal justice system and to enact police reform in George Floyd's name that passed the House already. I know Republicans have their own ideas and are engaged in a very productive discussions with Democrats in the Senate. We need to work together to find a consensus. But let's get it done next month by the first anniversary of George Floyd's death. The other issue is guns. Biden has called America's record on gun violence an embarrassment. But is he willing to stake his political capital to implement reforms? Gun sales are soaring in America. In March alone, 4.7 million Americans initiated background checks to buy guns. 
While campaigning, Biden made three promises on gun control, background checks, ban on assault weapons, and ending online sale of guns. None of these have been achieved. So it's time for Joe Biden to look inward. The Wuhan virus pandemic is under control in the US, but the epidemic of racism and gun violence is festering. Unfortunately, there are no vaccine targets to meet here. Joe Biden will need all his political experience to navigate this crisis. It's not something that can be done in a presidential term or even two. Beating racism in America will be a generational battle. And the way things are going, there's no guarantee of success. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.